thermochemistry is the release or the absorption of energy by a chemical reaction. Typically, we either do that by Q is equal to MCAT or by Hess's law, where we keep or flip equations, by the delta H of formation, where we're looking at a table, or by looking at bond energies. This activity actually asks you to combine a couple of those, and this activity encourages students to think about what data do I need, and once I have that data, what do I do with it? So if you look at the activity, first they're gonna to have to make some predictions. They can pick a concentration. You'll pick a concentration when you do this today. So you come and pick the molarity. You click the play button and all you're doing is observing what's going on, trying to record, hey, what data is can I collect? What's happening to the temperature? What's the equipment set up? So this is very open-ended inquiry based for the student and for you today. So that's the acid being added. There's the stir. And there's the base being added. What's important to note is reaction is incomplete. What that's telling you is they didn't let it go all the way. So you don't know the ending temperature because at the end of the activity, it's going to ask you to predict the ending temperature. The great thing about this interactive lab is that you can choose any point along the video and you can go back and rewind and watch something again if you want to. So you have to pick out what data do you need. They ask you to write a net ionic and Based on your net ionic, then they want you to find delta H for the reaction, where you do the delta H of formation of all the products minus the delta H of formation of all the reactants. This will give you a number in terms of kilojoules per mole. Determine the number of moles that react. That's just a function of, you know the molarity and you know the volume. Now, one thing I had to figure out is this concentration is of the acid and the base together. So they're either both 0.5 molar or they're both one molar or they're both two molar. It's not changing the concentration of just one of them. So after you find the number of moles and after you find the delta H for the equation, then they say calculate the energy. Well, if you know the number of moles and you know the delta H, then you ought to be able to find the amount of energy. And then it asks you to predict the final temperature for each trial. And that is going to involve you taking the Q for each trial from number five, the amount of energy, and plugging it into Q is equal to MC delta T in number six. This is a very good example of a lab in which students don't have a set of instructions. They kind of have to figure it out. This would be similar to the ASIM lab where you're mixing chemicals together in styrofoam cups, measuring the temperature change and calculating Q, but instead you're finding the delta H based on heats of formation and then you're predicting the final temperature. Now, after you enter the data here, you lock the answer and continue, and then it has you go on to a second part. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You're seeing the student view right here. If this is something you wish to employ in your classroom, what I want you to understand is you can come up to here as a teacher and you can say, hey, I want you to show me the answers and the notes. And when you do that, you're gonna come down here and they're gonna give you hints along the way. So go ahead and log on to Pivot Interactive and give this lab a try.